Last Halloween, I explained the origins of the ghost box, which originally was called the Frank's box, and showed you how to turn one into a spirit portal. But this is just one tool amongst many used by what is called a paranormal investigator in search of ghosts, hence the term ghost hunting. Dating back to the 19th century, ghost hunting certainly has made a name for itself over the years with shows such as Unsolved Mysteries, Ghost Hunters, and Ghost Adventures, not counting the thousands of videos found on YouTube. Ghost hunting is all about finding evidence to support paranormal activity. But how do you do such a thing? Well, this is where electronics comes in. It is believed that ghosts or spirits live in some other dimension and that through the use of electronic equipment, we could provide a means of communication or portal for these entities to communicate with us. The process involves using everything from EMF meters, digital thermometers, digital video cameras, thermographic and night vision, audio recorders, infrared motion sensors, and more to detect the presence of these ghosts or spirits. But before we had all this technology, other tools had to be used. One of the first ghost detector tool was built by a British psychic investigator called Harroward Carrington, and he called this the Ululameter. The Ululameter was also called the Psychic Howler. According to the Washington Times in 1921, the Ululameter's purpose was to reveal the presence of any energy, living or disembodied, by emitting a loud noise which sometimes sounded like a howl. The instrument was connected to telephone receivers that were placed over the observer's ears. Another tool was called the Lastrometer or Psychic Energy Meter. It was created by psychologist Sidney Alras of the Uppsala University in Sweden. It was usually placed in the middle of a table during a seance. It contained a green screen that glowed in the dark and its purpose was to measure psychic energy. An increase in brightness would signal the presence of an invisible spirit. The Indianapolis Times ran an article in January 1925 on Thomas Edison's theory on communication with the dead in which they listed these ghost hunting devices along with three others. The stenometer developed by parapsychologist and writer Pajois of Paris was devised to measure psychic strength. It was a type of biometer which could detect the nervous force emitted by the body. The velometer, also known as the willboard and also invented by Professor Sidney Allrutz, was said to register the pressure exercised by the human will showing it to be a definite physical energy or force, and not merely a choice, as modern psychology teaches. According to the Times article, none of these devices had yet registered the presence of the dead, but then went on to say that two Dutch scientists, Drs. Malta and Van Zeist, also known as Van Zeltz, had produced an instrument called the dynamistograph, which, they asserted, had induced the departed personality to enter, had measured it, and proved it. The device consisted of a cylinder into which the spirit influence was supposed to enter. There was a table, isolated by a sheet of glass and charged with an electric current, a pair of scales, and a writing apparatus arranged on the Morse system. The instrument had supposedly been transferred to Thomas Edison's laboratory, who, according to American Magazine and Forbes Magazine's October 16, 1920 issue, that he had been working on a device for some time that would let the living communicate with the dead. There was a time when ghost hunting and paranormal investigators made the news quite often with these inventions and the media tried to satisfy our thirst for the paranormal. And while it doesn't seem newsworthy today and been hidden away in a closet like a dirty secret, I believe our thirst for the supernatural is alive more than ever and will never go away. With some help from the internet and PCB Way, I got a tiny board made to build my own ghost finder. I probably won't get a mention in any newspaper, but I figured we can test it along with some other cool little gadgets and build our own ghost finder rig. And who knows, maybe we'll get lucky and make contact with a long lost spirit or summon what should have remained in its slumber. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm the Retro Repair Guy. 
My favorite time of the year, Halloween is here. Well, one of my favorite times. I love Christmas and I love Black Friday. <laughs> yes, Black Friday is one of my favorite shopping days. You know, Mrs. RG is like, don't bring any crap home, but you know, I have to. I'm just, I'm so addicted. Oh my God. Anyways, aside from that, I want to tell you, don't forget that I have a 3000 subscriber giveaway coming up. So of course, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, hit the notification button to keep uh, you know alerted on this. And I'm also going to be posting on the community forum. Uh, I'm going to try to keep you all updated as much as possible. It's going to be a restoration. I'm just not sure if it's going to be the restoration of that week or it's going to be the restoration um, you know, that I've done before or something. I'm going to try to do something special. Now it's going to be open to US and Canada. I haven't confirmed yet overseas or not. I'm going to look into that. Um, and you know, there's shipping, there's all kinds of stuff, insurance. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, I'm going to look into all that. Aside from that, I want to tell you, I've got a new Patreon uh, page, a patreon.com slash the retro repair guy. And I had retro repair guy and I deleted it and they won't let me take it back. So it's the retro repair guy altogether, uh, patreon.com. And of course, um, what I've done is I have a few tiers. And uh, I think starting at the second tier, anyway, starting in November, I'm going to be doing uh, a week early release on the videos um, and, you know, early access. And there's going to be as well um, other perks and there won't be any commercials. So if you want to look at that, you want to support the channel, please take a look. Patreon.com slash the retro repair guy. Now today, back to Halloween, because I love Halloween, I made a ghost finder, a little box. Uh, and, you know, I'll talk a little bit uh, about it a little later, but without uh, further ado, Let's just jump right in. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They make top quality PCBs from your Gerber files starting at only $5. I'll start your PCBs have not been upgraded for free from TG131 40 heat resistance to TG150. If you're in need of getting your own PCBs manufactured at reasonable prices for production runs or simply run off PCB, they offer excellent quality and unsurpassed service to help you with your designs and free online quotes. And with their quick order feature, parameters are automatically set from your Gerber file. With fast turnaround times and fast delivery, I definitely recommend checking them out. The link is in the description below. I got the idea from a few different sources online that all used three transistors to capture and boost the signal. So using Easy EDA, I designed a tiny little board and sent it off to PCBWay. I hadn't used the software before and designed something super fast and as a result did not realize just how small the board was. Nevertheless, it seemed perfect for this little project. I ordered the parts I needed and picked out a small enclosure on the jungle side that had good reviews. It was pretty sturdy and even had a gasket to make it waterproof. I began by taking measurements on the sides to make a hole in the center for the RF connectors that were going to be mounted for the telescopic antennas. Because the case was thick and sturdy, the connector didn't protrude out as much as it should have, so I wanted to make sure the connection was still being made. I then soldered the components onto the board. Because I designed a double-sided board, I had to make sure the solder melted through the holes to make the connection on both sides. I forgot to order resistors, but luckily I have many on hand and after a little digging I was able to find the correct value and the wattage was perfect for this tiny board. Because I designed the holes for the tiny legs of the LEDs, I was unable to fit any wire I wanted, but I found some 22 gauge non-braided wire so that I could connect the LED to the cover of the case. I measured to perfectly center it and made a 3 8 of an inch hole to tightly fit the tiny lead. The battery connectors came in. Oddly, it was not fitting the way I had envisioned and couldn't figure out why. So I glued it sideways in the case. Another thing I realized is that I had not made any holes on the board or made it long enough to be able to secure it to the inside of the case. So I purchased plastic spacers to glue to the board and to the case to hold the board in place. In the kit, 
I found the ones that were the exact height of the ones molded into the case. While building the project, I thought it would be nicer if the other lead also came out on the front of the case, so I made a hole for that one. Even if it was a tight fit, I added hot glue to make sure the leads would not come out. Before moving forward, I thought it would be a good idea to test the leads. However, when I tried to put in AA batteries, I realized I had received the wrong battery holders that were made for larger batteries, so I removed it and went to my local electronic shop. While I was there, I figured it might be a good idea to add an on-off switch and purchased one. That, of course, required another hole in the case. I re-glued the correct battery holder and tested the LEDs. The on-off switch is very simple as it only requires taking the red wire of the battery connector to one of the terminals and adding another wire from the other connector to the board. I of course tested that as well before proceeding. For the LEDs, I added some heat shrink tubing to secure the solder points and protect the legs from touching each other. I then cleaned some residue off the board using 99% alcohol and then glued the two little plastic spacers directly to the board. Once dried, I added hot glue to the other side of the spacers and held it firmly down into the bottom of the case for a minute until the glue dried. I connected the two antenna wires to the RF connectors. I added the rubber gasket to the cover as well as two brand new AA batteries before closing everything up. And lastly, I screwed in the two antennas. My prototype Ghost Finder is now ready to detect the presence of entities wanting to communicate with our world. Okay, so for this little ghost box, um, basically it, it's my design, but it's not my idea and it's not uh, internally, I didn't design the circuit. What I mean by that is if you go to Google and you just type uh, how to build a ghost finder, everybody's got the same design, okay, which is uh, three transistors, a resistor, you know, there's variations of that. So what I did is, of course, I took that idea and um, I, you know, ordered the box. I made myself a motherboard from that. I hadn't used <laughs> any software to build anything, uh, my God, forever. And plus, the way I used to build motherboards, um, you used to, uh, I think there was like a, an, oh yeah, photo negative. We used to make like, take the negative of, of a picture, basically, of a motherboard that we used to trace out and whatever. And then we used to press that on with um, a special spray onto copper boards, dunk the copper board into uh, an aquarium with the liquid, my god what a process right so <laughs> all that to say that today so much easier and pcb way just turned around like that and gave them to me you know all made and all ready and because it was my first motherboard it's not the best um you know ever i've got you know revision one two three four and i intend to do more projects it was really fun uh but anyways all that said that um so i designed the rest put a little on on switch a box everything so basically what it does when you turn it on um, you see like now it's lighting when I'm touching it or when I, when I, you know, rub the antennas or anything like that, it detects like some electrostatic. Um, so basically that's what it does. You, you know, if you don't touch it, if you're just going around or you leave it somewhere in the middle of a room, you're ghost finding, or you leave it in your, you know, your table when you're um, doing a seance or something. So basically if it detects something coming near it, it's going to light up 
And of course, the stronger the signal, the stronger it's going to light up. Uh, so, but like I said, this, you see I'm touching it now, so it, it kind of lights up here. I don't know if you can see that. So uh, that's its function. Um, and, but like I said, not exactly my design. I just modified a few things, so I don't want to take credit for that. Uh, I just wanted to make this little box and see if it's gonna do anything, if it's gonna detect any ghosts during my seance. Last year I transformed the ghost box into a spirit portal but I was unhappy with the wireless speaker because of the rounded edges so I got a new one. While I'm at it, I quickly wanted to go over the connection for the signal path of the ghost box. I'm using the same battery connectors in which I had crossed the wires since the pedals have a negative tip. You'll also need two 3 8 of an inch to a quarter inch adapters for connecting to the radio and speaker. The portal uses a noise suppressor guitar pedal and a digital reverb guitar pedal. The noise suppressor eliminates the white noise of the radio and the reverb pedal does exactly as its name implies, adds reverb, so the words coming through not only sound more ghostly but get extended, which allows us to hear better. The radio signal needs to first be connected to the noise suppressor, which then gets connected to the reverb and finally to the radio. I let it run for a while to see if it was working as I could not hear anything. So I decided to ask a question and it gave me a scare. Is anyone there? And of course, What's better than a little rig equipped with a video camera, a UV LED flashlight, and an EMF reader for ghost detecting. And while I don't have access to an abandoned haunted house, I'll have to use my kitchen for a seance and see if I can summon any lost spirits. So last year I showed you how this whole thing was built and how it was, you know, uh, how it was functioning too. So I opened that up, I showed you what was inside and how, you know, it was modified. Uh, so if you want to take a look at that video from last year, I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, but the thing is, is that I just want to go through with you again uh, quickly the signal. So the signal leaves the radio. Uh, goes through the first pedal which cancels out the white noise and then from the white noise it goes into the reverb and then into the radio so the reverb why do we add it well basically you know and i've explained it before but basically the reverb you know because it's scanning all the time quickly the words it'll give you a few you know a second or two of like i say a second whatever but you know like it's just gonna uh, accentuate the word and you have time to hear it uh, because you know it's, it's reverberating so um, there is that why we add in it gives you that cool little sound or ghostly sound as well right um, and you see I changed the box because I was really unhappy last year I had a, a really rounded all round the whole thing was round and it was a bit thinner uh, and it was sliding off nice smooth surfaces uh, plastic whereas this one's kind of a imitation no I think it's actually wood uh, so the thing is uh, this is my cheap velcro uh, but basically you know you could put all this into one nice big box as you can make yourself take all the the ins and you know the innards of this and put it in one big box it'd be really nice too uh, just give yourself access to this little button uh, because for the white noise that's the only thing you need to adjust once in a while when I have fun with it, but you'll see me fiddling with that button because sometimes the signal is a little bit too strong. And what happens is you need to cancel out the white noise again. Um, so that's why you're playing with it. But aside from that, there's not much the reverb. It's how you like it. You set it. So it'd be nice to put all that in one big box. Maybe one day I'll do it. A reminder also that the, these, if you buy these connectors for batteries, 
uh, you're not plugging in or giving it juice from a nine volt. Um, the connectors have to be switched to wires. It's a negative tip for the pedals. So you got to reverse the wires of the polarity. Uh, and that's why I have this, uh, you know, uh, uh, she, my God, the, the, the shrink tubing on top of it. Sorry. Um, you know, because I, I resoldered the, uh, the connectors. So anyways, that, that's basically the, the, the box. And if, like I said, if you want to take a look at the video from last year, uh, there's more explanation on it, but it's really cool. The girls have a lot of fun with it. anyone with us is there anyone with us any spirits here Philip is your name Philip <laughs> Philip if you're here with us talking to the radio tell us where you're from Earth? Philip, can you tell us how old you are? Eight. I keep hearing eight. Me too. Philip, are you alone? Help? Did you say help? Are you alive or dead, Frank? Dead. dead. What about you, Philip? Do you know if you're alive or dead? Alive. Alive. Well, Frank is dead and Philip so So if you're alive, Philip, where are you? Here. Here? You're here with us. Frank, do you have any kids? Sure. What do you want to talk about, Frank? Pain? Yeah. Yes. What are you are you in pain, Frank? Or are you sad? What kind of pain was it? Both? What do you want us to help with? Bye. Bye. Okay, so we're gonna go. Bye.